Okay, today's a big day. Uh, I'm gonna be doing something that I have been excited to do and scared to do <laughs> for a while. I'm not scared because I know it's gonna turn out bad anyway, but uh, yeah. So I've been wanting to, or let me back up. So I'm always talking about all the lead paint in here. And it's been suggested to me a number of times that, hey, get that tested. It might not be uh, lead paint. So yeah, today I'm gonna go around and talk about a few spaces that I'm uh, working on. And uh, we're gonna test the paint and see if there's any lead content in it. Because depending on whether there is or not, it's gonna make a drastic uh, diversion in my course of action. So uh, where to even start? So let me just, let me show you a couple things. We're in this uh, main bay that you've seen me clean out uh, in previous videos. And this place is beautiful. Um, it looks kind of dusty and dirty at the moment, but uh, I've mentioned so many times I want to just light this entire thing up with industrial lighting, get it really cleaned out, get it power washed, and uh, turn it into something super special. So that's the plan. But everywhere in this building is this same green paint. And it's kind of flaky and chippy. Um, it, it could be latex, but it's really old. So there's a high probability that there's lead in it. Uh, someone mentioned to me that maybe it's not because lead paint would have been a little bit more expensive and they might've gone the, the cheaper route throughout the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Basically the entire building <laughs> needs to either have the lead paint sealed or removed or, or whatever. So this room is uh, one of the major areas that uh, I have high hopes for and uh, that I want to uh, get tested. So the second place you will recognize uh, from a previous video, I think I'm a little bit backlit. Let me come down here and get turned around. Uh, this is the, the front entry to the building. And uh, in a previous video, you saw that there was like a drop ceiling in here. The walls were covered with paneling that was all peeling. And I want to bring this back to uh, the original industrial look, everything original as much as possible. So one thing about this is that uh, this is the entryway. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a special area. This is where all the employees would have come in every day, right through those two doors, right there. And uh, right here was somebody with a desk because there's a hole there for handing stuff through. And then in cases it was necessary, that window actually rises, slides up. The same as this one and a way probably to hand your paycheck through or time card there. Um, it's all speculation on my part. If you can see this guy here, this is, when we peeled the paneling off of here, there was a sign that said information right here. And it had a really cool 1930s font on it. And uh, it was actually featured in another video, uh, one of the very early videos on the channel. So like I said, this is kind of a special area. And right up here was, uh, I think a bulletin board or a time card thing, I'm not sure. So what I'd like to do is put a, um, a photo wall right there dedicated to the workers over the decades. And then just like all the other areas, fill this place with industrial lighting. So the thing about this room is that, uh, so w when you have a, a project like this, sometimes it's very easy to get discouraged and to feel like all you're doing is sweeping trash and all you, you know, uh, and you don't feel like you're making those big steps forward that you can stand back and say, wow, I, I made a difference. I actually accomplished something. So I think for a little emotional uplift for me, uh, for like a, something to keep my motivation going. I might treat this room as my first project uh, to really, really go at because uh, for the most part, all the different areas that I'm working on, they're all uh, 
the goal is to get them to a blank slate area. And by that, I mean everything out, everything kind of cleaned up, the walls prepped. And then I can roll scaffoldings around, I can do whatever I want and just work on stuff and actually do some of the real work for progress. Uh, and that's kind of where this room is. There's a little bit more paneling that needs to come off. Uh, but I have some wiring issues with the internet and stuff, so that's why that's still there. Uh, but other than that, this room is ready to, you know, do some, some of the interesting, good, cool uh, work that really explodes, you know, the transformation. So uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, painting the walls and getting the artwork up and hanging all of the industrial lighting. And I, my goal is to do that by the end of this year. Uh, <laughs> that may shock some of you that like, whoa, I thought this whole building was gonna be done this year. No, no way, no way. So uh, yeah, but before I do that, I need to test the paint. Uh, because, well actually, I have some questions about all the legal stuff that's evolved. And I'll tell you guys what I know and I'll maybe I'll ask you, maybe you guys know something. So uh, before we get to that, let's move on to the next area that I wanna test. So. Uh, for this room, this this stuff uh, is not peeling, so I can I'm pretty sure I can legally just paint that and seal it in, and that's okay. This brick is a little bit different because it's got some some flakiness going on, so that's gonna have to be uh, dealt with before I can actually paint that or maybe return it back to brick. That's a decision for the future. I'm not gonna concern myself with that quite yet. Uh, this room's kind of cool because that's all paneling. I just move, remove that wood paneling and that paneling back there is like the paneling out there. I can just paint it. And then there's just a little brick work right around there and a little brick work on that wall back there. So uh, check out these lights. Those are like Art Deco fluorescent light uh, fixtures. Let me see if I can. Aren't those cool? So, let's see if I can I'm try to get them. They, they have actually, not only are they kind of, uh, Art Deco on the end there, the place that they mount into the ceiling is also kind of cool and it's got like a really interesting profile on it. So anyway, I'm digressing. Okay, so um, I'm working all these rooms and uploading videos out of order. So you may have seen some of the progress on this room and this looks like a step backwards. Uh, just because of the order I've uploaded them. But uh, yeah, I wanna test this paint. So this would be kind of the third major one that I wanna do. If you recall, um, when we removed all of this panel, we found out that this tin, it's painted a different color down here, but it's still the same tin. This tin goes from floor to the ceiling and very likely all the way to the ground. Uh, at the time of recording this, I haven't, like I said, taken that paneling off, but I have a feeling that this paneling will be gone and you'll have already seen that in a previous video upload. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know which order I'm gonna do. But I'm really interested in this paint specifically because look at that tin back there. And that tin up there, it's the same stuff. and just wiping my hand across that 99% falls off. So it would be very easy to just lightly hit that and take it all the way back to, you know, basically like a tin tunnel in here. Not sure what's behind that paneling. That could be wood or tin because that's an outside wall. I mean, interior wall, but it's outside of this section here. And then on this side, we've got the brick. So. Those are the uh, three main places that I want. And then just for good measure, because I've got enough swabs to test multiple uh, places. Okay, and the third, uh, or the 
third. There were three already. The last place I'm just itching to die. Uh, itching to die? Am I, I'm not itching to die. Uh, <laughs> I'm dying to or itching to know about uh, is the paint that's uh, right above me there. So this section of the building is concrete floors. And these concrete floors are through 80% uh, of the ground floor. There are a few spots, very few spots that need to have uh, concrete poured in them. Uh, the second floor, this is the ceiling in here. It's about 11 feet up. And it's the floor of the second floor. And it's, a, it's wood. So we got these like two by 14s, which are like real two by 14s. Uh, not like when you buy a two by four and it's not quite two by four. Uh, those are massive uh, running boards there. And then the third floor is also wood and the roof is wood with like lots of applications uh, of mop down tar. Uh, but the good thing is that the concrete floors in the bottom, they actually have uh, several drains through here. And uh, that means I can power wash. But if I wanna do something like that, I still kinda need to know, is it lead paint? And those rafters being wood, there's a small chance that they used different paint for those than they did for the bricks. So I'm just gonna add that to my list. Test it, why not? I have multiple swabs, I can test as many things as I want. So, uh, yeah, gonna do that. So, let's go collect some samples. Okay, so <clears throat> we got these swabs, and the directions say that you wet the swab, and then you rub it on the surface of whatever it is that you're trying to test. It's amazing how much light helps when you can't see something. In the light, my, my vision gets better. Uh, okay, so observe, observe the swab for color change. Please refer to color bar on the label. Red, violet, pink swab indicates presence of lead. Okay. It's amazing how much light helps when you can't see something. In the light, my, my vision gets better. Uh, okay, so observe, observe the swab for color change. Please refer to color bar on the label. Red, violet, pink swab indicates presence of lead. Okay. A uh, good thing that the paint that we're testing is not red because that could be a transfer of paint and that has to affect the results, right? Uh, but we're testing green and yellowish colors. So shouldn't be any kind of conflict there. So, okay. I just uh, was getting ready to, I, a bunch of Taco Bell cups, not a sponsored video. Uh, and I was gonna use them to collect the samples in. And there was melted ice, which is water. And I threw it out to collect the samples. and. Now it turns out I need some water and I don't have any. So I'm gonna have to look around <laughs> in all the old cups for melted ice or something. Okay, so I found some ice and I'm just gonna melt it right there in the sun. Uh, and while that's happening, I can share with you why I don't have water in the building. So I went up to the water department and they said, it's no problem, they can turn on the water it's like 15 bucks and I'm in business. And I almost said, okay, go ahead and do it. But then I, I told him to hold off for a minute and came back because I have the suspicion that somebody has clipped copper tubing out of the building before I owned it. So there's a distinct possibility that they would turn on that water and it would just start spraying in here. So I need to have a licensed plumber come and just run down all the lines and make sure that there isn't gonna be any kind of uh, catastrophe as soon as I turn it on. So um, I'll be scheduling that and then that'll be amazing because there was a plumbing store in here before and I think they had a working bathroom. So if the, I mean, I know there's a bathroom that looks like it's well taken care of and uh, looks operational, fully functional and operational so potentially we could have that so 
Uh, I'll have an update on that pretty soon. So right now we're just gonna wait for the ice to melt and we're gonna test for lead. Okay, so I've got my swabs, I've got my melted ice, and uh, we don't have to walk very far, about 10 or 20 steps to the first pillar here. Uh, even got our own lab station. And I gotta say that I'm 99% sure that this is gonna be lead paint. So uh, yeah, only one way to find out. Okay, so one thing I did wanna do is take this little bit of cloth and put a little water on it. Have to, on the second one, I'll have to be careful not to contaminate it. But uh, I just wanted to wipe some of the dirt and grime off so I can actually get like a static free connection between the swab and the paint. So uh, I'm not going overboard with alcohol and mineral spirits and all that stuff. I'm just gonna try to get some of the, the worst dirt off of there. My glasses for this. So according to the instructions, I just have to uh, What? Hold on a second. That, I had roofing tar all over my knuckle. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's already orange. From what I read on the instructions, I was supposed to put it in water and then it turns orangish yellow. Hold on a second. I got to figure this out. These might be not good. Okay, so the way this is written is kind of confusing. So it says, the instructions say, and this was sealed. So it says, that the, instru the instructions say that you take it out and you mix it in the water till it gets a mustard yellow color. Uh, and then you, you rub it on the, the paint for 30 seconds. And if it has any pink or red, then there's a presence of lead. So if you look, once you put water on it, it's supposed to be this color. And then if there's anything like that, then that means there's lead present. So the, the weird thing is that already looks like a, maybe that's an orange, not mustard. Maybe it's gonna go more yellow. I don't know, let's figure it out. So I'm putting it in here. Getting it wet. I mean, the thing was sealed. Let me see. Is that mustard? I don't know, but it doesn't look like any different than it was when I opened the container. It just looks wet. Okay, so. Time to test it, so. Thirty seconds. And it is definitely turning purple and pink. That is a very positive. <laughs> uh, can't focus too close. Let's go check it out in the light. All right, so like I said, if it turns like red, purple, pinkish, anything in that spectrum, then uh, it's a positive result. And that is definite, I don't know. That is definitely like a pink, pink purple. So, should I cry? Should I cry? Huh, okay. So, uh, I was already 99% sure that was the result I was going to get. Um, and I don't see any reason why any of the other places uh, would be any different. But uh, let's check. The one in the tin room is definitely a different kind of paint. So we might get lucky in there. But uh, let's make our rounds and see. This is like the exact same shade of green. So... Oh, it's almost, that didn't take any time at all. It's already get going pink. I mean, the juice from the water that's running down the wall is pink. So, 
That is another positive. What is that thing? <laughs> a raccoon hair. Oh, I feel like CSI. Uh, I got that rascally raccoon. <laughs> maybe I could, maybe I could, uh, let's see here. Maybe I could clone, clone him. You hear that? I got your DNA. <laughs> okay, and because uh, I'm excited about this hallway, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna try this other wall. Thirty seconds. Yep, there's pink on it. Oh. Zero for three. Uh, I know for a fact that that's the exact same paint. So not even going to bother. Not even going to bother. But there is the, uh, the last two things, which is the, um, the paint that's on the tin walls. I think that's a different paint. Uh, lead free? Don't know. Let's find out. This one. This one is not showing pink. So. So I was super happy until I realized that this paint is different than this paint. So this paint does not have lead. Uh, I'm not home free yet, but maybe, maybe. Let's see. Okay. How is that possible? That's pink. Foiled again. <laughs> some of it's lead, some of it's not. It's just a little bit of color difference, two different kinds of paint. Whoo, dang. All right, uh, yeah. There's no need to test the floorboards. It's the same color, it's the same paint. So, uh, what does that mean for me? I got lead paint everywhere. Most of it's chipping and peeling. Um, hmm. So uh, I think it's safe to assume that wherever there's paint in this building, that it's almost guaranteed to be lead paint. So uh, what does that mean for me? So I know that I can uh, like paint over and just seal lead paint in without any problem. Um, so I did do some research on Google about what I can do about lead paint, what's legal, what's the whole, you know, abatement thing. And from what I understand, uh, from what I found on Google, and we all know that you can trust Google 100%, everything you find on Google, you can uh, bet your bottom dollar on. Uh, but this is what I kind of gathered from looking online. And that is that, if it's private property, uh, if it's private property and it's not a renovation where there's just, it's being done so that you can rent it out, which is not what this is. I mean, getting this building up to code is years in the future. Uh, I just wanna get the building rehabbed right now. I, I can think about rentals or whatever later in the future. So for the moment, this is just a private property. Um, and because it's a private property, I don't have plans for renting it out. It's not like a renovation to turn into apartments or whatever. And if I don't dry remove it, which is like sanding, because uh, if you do that, you have to get the, the HVEC or whatever it is, those special vacuum cleaners. Um, if I do it wet, like, you know, 
mist it and then scrape it with a regular paint scraper, just knock the flakes off so that I can just seal over it. I think I'm okay, I think I can do that. Um, one thing that I thought about doing is taking the 40 hour class so that I can get certified to remove lead paint and I can just do it all myself. So spending 40 hours and getting that certification and paying for that class uh, makes way more sense than having a company come in to do a 77,000 square foot building. So uh, yeah, so there's a high likelihood I'll be enrolling in that class. Uh, but from what I understand, I don't really need it. It's private property. It's not, uh, you know, a project that's getting renovated to be apartments or rental space for businesses. Um, and I'm not sandblasting or using sandpaper and that kind of thing. So, uh, do you guys know something about that? Is there anybody that knows for 100% sure what the rules are about that? Uh, I think I'll probably just go up to the city and ask them. They'll be able to tell me. But uh, I, I always love asking you guys. So uh, if you know something about that for the state of Illinois, uh, please, and it may be a federal thing. I don't know if it's nationwide or state by state. But if you know something about it, let me know. And I'm going to go home and cry now. It's lead paint. I'll see you next time.